Okay, uh, what's the, uh, Mark, what's the verse again? Verse 1, 9, verse 1. Okay. There I say to you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Okay, well, how many? Well, how about one? Well, Produce one. You think there's one, there's one person that's still alive from when Jesus said this that has not died and still waiting for the kingdom? Well, this, this is a problematic verse. What's your interpretation? It's not a problem for me. Do you think me. that this, this verse literally says that some people uh, have not tasted of death for the last 2,000 years? No, you're saying that. You're saying the kingdom has not come has not come yet. And Jesus said, some that stand here will not taste death until they see the kingdom come. Now, if you okay. say the kingdom has not come, you've got somebody out here that's over 2,000 years old still alive. Oh, I, oh. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I, I get you now. I get you now. Okay. Verily I say that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of, uh, of God come with power. Well, the, the, kingdom is, the kingdom is described as having no sin. This is not the kingdom, sir. Some the, of those the, people have not tasted of death, but the, so, that doesn't mean we're in the kingdom. So, so there's got to be somebody out there that's still alive that heard Jesus say this, or that was alive when Jesus said that. I'm not saying that either. Uh, I'm saying well, you've got to say it one way or the other. You've got to say one way or the other. One is a problematic verse. Uh, uh, it's a problem. Either, either, it's a problem for your doctrine. Somebody that's is for still sure. alive from 2,000 years ago, or the kingdom is here, but the kingdom is not here, sir. There's too much evil no, in the world. No, you say the kingdom's not here, but yet you won't say that someone is 2,000 years old because Jesus said. There are some that won't taste death till they see the kingdom. Now, you th oh, it's a problematic a, sir, because a you have a problem. There's all kinds of problems with these translations. And oh, so now we're going to talk about believe, the translation. Uh, how, about, how about you just how about you scream uh, out uh, your uh, doctrine, uh, sir? I'll bet, uh, I'll bet if I really uh, did a detailed study of this verse, I could find it. I'll bet you would. Probably a bad translation. I'll bet you would. All right. See, I like, it's a problematic verse. It's a problematic verse. Friends, when, when the Bible doesn't fit your theology it I guarantee it the Bible will be a problematic verse it will have problematic verses but the problem is really not with the kingdom so much as it is the doctrine but if we will start to look at what Mr. James is saying and he's like he's like so many other people I'm gonna say the majority of people in quote on Christianity the problem they have with the kingdom is that it doesn't fit their theology. See, that's why it's problematic. That's why it's difficult because it just doesn't fit what they think, well, what they this, believe. This is a problematic verse. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. All right, it's a problematic verse. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some problematic verses, some verses that give problems to the idea that Jesus is going to come back and establish a kingdom upon this earth. And we're going to show why those are problems, see? Why they're problematic. Now, the problem with the kingdom, see, the problem with the kingdom as the Bible teaches is that, number one, it was near. Now, think about this. People who say the kingdom has not yet come, they, Hagees, right? Hagees, hens, uh, uh, Eli James, you name it, run the gamut. They have a problem with the kingdom because the Bible says it was near in the days that Jesus was living. It was something very close. They wanted to be still in the distance. They still wanted to be off somewhere not yet established. Now, I know many of you watching out there, good friends, neighbors, what y'all doing? You've been hearing the preacher say, well, yeah, Jesus is coming back and he's going to establish his kingdom. But the problem that you have is the Bible doesn't talk about that. So the problem with the kingdom that you have may be the Bible saying that it is near. Now watch this. When you think about what Jesus taught his disciples, he taught his disciples to pray this prayer. Let me get, let me get my Bible verse up here so we can all read it together. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6 and verse 10, everybody, most people know this, uh, uh, this passage, the, 
They, they say it's the Lord's Prayer. It's actually the model prayer. He's teaching his disciples to pray. And here's how he told them to pray. He said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Now watch this. Thy kingdom come. Now why would he tell them to pray, Thy kingdom come? Well, obviously because it had not yet come. Now a lot of people still pray this prayer. But I'm going to say this is a problematic verse. Because the kingdom... The kingdom has already come and now people are going to be looking and people are looking for a kingdom that has already come. When he taught them to pray, it had not come yet. But the question is, when did it come? Has it come already? Is it still to come? Many people praying the same prayer, waiting for that kingdom. But the question is, should they be? Should they be? Is this verse, Matthew 6, 10... Is it a problematic verse? Since Jesus said, pray thy kingdom come. Is it a problematic verse? Well, I think Mr. Well, e. Dodd James this would say. Is a problematic verse. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. All right. Is it a problematic verse for Jesus to teach his disciples to pray? Well, let's consider. Let's consider what happens uh, uh, in this same context. Jesus, as he is teaching his disciples to pray, thy kingdom come, is also having them preach something. Notice, in Matthew 10, 7, Jesus said, As ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, friends, something that is at hand is something that is close by. It's near. It's about to take place. It is not too far off. Notice, Jesus himself prayed. Matthew 4, 17. I mean, I, I preached. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, why would he preach the kingdom is at hand? Unless it was near, unless it was something that was, that was on the verge of taking place. John the baptizer, Matthew 3 and verse 2. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, friends, people do not advertise something being at hand that is still, still years and years and years off. You know, one thing that comes to mind, uh, to my mind, is I see advertisements for movies. And they may advertise a movie that's a couple of years away, coming in the, fo in the, in the summer of 2012. You know, I, I, I like to watch The Lord of the Rings. I was anticipating when those movies came out. You know what? They were a couple years down the line. I don't know if there was a year between them or not, but there was, uh, you know, there was some time there, but we were looking for it. We were looking for it. I'm still looking for The Hobbit to come out. See? It's still a couple. They're still advertising it. But they were advertising that for a couple years ago. See? And it's still not going to come out until when? I think, I think maybe, uh, maybe 13, 2013. I'm not sure. But see, that's a couple years off, but it's still at hand. But you don't advertise something being at hand that is 60, 70, 100, or 1,000 years off because people who are alive may not be able to participate in it. You don't plan something and say, you know what, in, in 100 years, we're going to have this great big picnic. Well, you know what, I don't think many of us around here are going to be around in 100 years. I dare say most people listening to this program are not going to be around in 100 years. So what good would it do to advertise something that's a long way off? But if you advertise something at hand, people know to anticipate it. They know to get ready for it. So these verses, these verses that say the kingdom of heaven is at hand, if I had Mr. James to read these, you know what I think he would say? Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. You're right, they're problematic verses. They're, they're, they're saying the kingdom's at hand, okay? So they're problem verses because the kingdom was near. Now notice this. In, uh, in uh, the Bible, we find that John the baptizer was prophesied to come. He was the forerunner, all right? Isaiah said in Isaiah 40, verse 3, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So there was to be someone who was going to be the forerunner before the king. Now, 
John was that man. John 1 verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now when we talk about John the, the baptizer and his role, his job uh, of being a forerunner to the king, this is going to create something. It's going to create a problem. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Well, That's right. This, this is a problematic verse. That's right, Mr. James. These are problematic verses. Now, why would this be a problematic verse? Because of this. John was being the, the harbinger, the forerunner. He would precede the king. Now, Luke writes, Luke records in Luke 1, verse 76, about John. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. So, John was the forerunner. He was the one that came before. And notice what he said about himself. This is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah. That's John 1, 19 and verse 23. Now, you shouldn't have someone saying, Get ready for the king. Get ready for the king. If the king is not going to have a kingdom, why would you have a king without a kingdom? Why would you say the king's coming, the king's coming? But you know what? He's not going to have a kingdom for a long, long time. Why even mention the king's coming? Why even get ready for a king if he's not going to have a kingdom? Why do you think Herod wanted to put to death the, all the babies to, to try to kill Jesus? He was worried about a kingdom. The very idea of a king coming and not having a kingdom? Now that's a problem, see? But when you have someone that is sent from God who's been prophesied that he's going to come and make straight the, the paths of the Lord, then you ought to know that if the king's coming, there's going to come a kingdom. There's going to come a kingdom. And so that's what John did. John prepared the way for the Lord and Jesus even said this about John. He said, This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Now, if the messenger of the king came, shouldn't, shouldn't the king and the kingdom closely follow? Shouldn't it? Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. That's right. Problematic verse. You know why? Because the kingdom was so near, and they were getting ready for it. Now watch this. Here's another verse that shows us just how near the kingdom was. How close it was at hand. In Luke 22, 15 and 16, Jesus said to his disciples, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not suffer I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Now, why would he say, I'm not going to eat with you until the kingdom comes? If the kingdom was still thousands of years off. Was he going to be able to eat with his disciples in a kingdom? No, he wasn't, because they'd be dead in thousands of years. They'd be dead in, in, uh, in, the, in the time that Mr. James and other premillennialists or, or uh, uh, earthly kingdom believers uh, uh, time frame that they give us. See, the kingdom, in their mind, the kingdom hadn't come yet. But Jesus is telling these folks, look, I'm going to eat with you in the kingdom. Now, we eat with Christ in the kingdom every first day of the week. Because we, we know that the kingdom has come. It is the church. And we commune with our Lord in the kingdom every first day of the week when we partake of the unleavened bread and the fruit of the vine. Now, those of you who don't believe the kingdom's come, you don't get to commune with the, with the Lord. But if the kingdom had come, if the kingdom was close by, when Jesus ascended and the church was established, or the kingdom was established, then wouldn't he be able to eat with them in the kingdom? Wouldn't he be able to commune with them in the kingdom? Certainly. He certainly would. So, Jesus talked about the kingdom as, as being something close by. Now, now, that might be a problem verse for Mr. Mr. James. I'm sure it would. Now, think about this. 
Jesus told the thief on the cross. Jesus was talking to the thief on the cross, or the thief on the cross was talking to him, and the thief said, Luke 23, 42, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Now let me ask you this, friends. Everybody knows about the thief on the cross. They know what he said. But notice what Jesus said. When Jesus res responded, when Jesus responded to the thief on the cross, did he tell him that the kingdom was not coming? Well, I mean, why didn't he? I mean, here was a man who obviously had heard about the kingdom. John the baptizer was preaching the kingdom's at hand. Jesus himself was preaching the kingdom's at hand. Everywhere the disciples of Christ were going, they were preaching the kingdom's at hand. Surely the thief on the cross had heard about the kingdom. And so here he says, Lord, remember we will not come into thy kingdom. And Jesus says to him, Verily I say unto you, the kingdom is not coming. Where did you ever get such a notion? Instead, we're going to start, I'm going to establish my church, which is not the kingdom. Jesus didn't say that, friends. Jesus didn't say this. Jesus said, Today thou will be me in paradise. Why? Because the kingdom was coming. He, he would have refuted that if it weren't true. Now, friends, why, why didn't the thief, uh, why did the thief think the kingdom was coming? See? And then look at this. Then you have Jesus resurrected from the dead, and the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Why would Jesus spend the last forty days of his life on earth? He spent three years Three years preparing these 12 men, or these men, he, he, spent, he spent three years preparing these men to carry on his mission, to carry out his work that he was laying the groundwork for, and the last thing he says are things pertaining to the kingdom. You mean to tell me that the kingdom hadn't come yet? He's preparing these, he's talking to these people about something that is still yet to come? Now, friends, I know some of you folks are teachers. Y'all school teachers. And I know what you do most of the year in public schools. You spend your time worrying about these exit exams. I don't know what they're called up here. They all have different letters, but you know what I'm talking about, these standardized tests. You spend all the time working about them. Now, let me ask you something. When those if those tests weren't going to be taken until 10 years from now, would you spend all your time preparing the students to take those tests? I know you wouldn't. Most of the teachers out there hate those tests. See? And I know if once I speak, because I have a lot of friends who are teachers, and my, a lot of uh, uh, the folks in my family are school teachers, and they don't like those tests, but do you think they're going to be preparing for those tests if it wasn't the case that they were close by, that they were near, or that they were at hand? Now think about this, friends. If you, if you were limited on this earth, you knew the time on this earth was, was very short. You knew you only had 40 days to live on this earth. What would you do? What would you spend the most time dealing with? You would spend the most time dealing with the things that were more important, that were most important to the one still living. Jesus spent 40 days talking about the kingdom and here we are now finding out from Mr. Eli James and all the other individuals who think the kingdom hadn't come yet that, well, no, the kingdom hadn't come yet. It's not here. It's not here. As a matter of fact, that's what he said. Let me see if I can play that video for you. He says, no, no, the, the, kingdom, the kingdom's not here. Let's see here. Where does he, find, where does he play that? Uh, get over here. Here he says, no, oh, the kingdom's not here. I know I got it here somewhere. You'd never be able to find it, brother. <laughs> I'll just tell you right now. Yeah, he just 
find it right here. I think. All right, kingdom not here. Here he is. Listen to him. So the kingdom is hey. not already here? Yeah, yeah, the kingdom is coming right down here to earth. I'm talking about it's not already here? Oh, the kingdom is definitely not yet here. Okay. It doesn't so, come until the second coming. So, all right, definitely not here. Hadn't come until the second coming. And here Jesus hadn't even got through with the first coming, and he's still talking about the kingdom. Well, you know, I, I, know, what, I know what Mr. James would say about this verse, don't you? Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. It'd be another problematic verse for him because he's all mixed up about the kingdom. He's all mixed up about the kingdom. Now, let me put something in your minds, friends. The Bible talks about the kingdom 115 times in the Gospels alone. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. 115 times the kingdom is mentioned. Now, if it wasn't at hand, and if it wasn't important, or if it wasn't something that we should be concerned about, why spend so much time? And then 27 times from the book of Acts to the Revelation, uh, you find kingdom. But you know what you never find? You never find the kingdom being stated that it's still a long way off. You never find the kingdom being spoken of as if it hasn't come yet. You, it, you, you, see, you see it talking about it's at hand, it's at hand, and then the next thing you know in the book of Acts, boom, there it is. It's already here. And so these, these problematic verses come because people are looking for the kingdom way off when really it's near. Now, you know what the problem with the kingdom is also? The problem with the kingdom that Mr. James and those like him have is the kingdom is spiritual. It's a spiritual kingdom. Now that's another problem. That's another problem. See? Because notice this. In, in uh, John 18, verse 36, Jesus is standing before Herod. I mean, excuse me, Pilate. Pilate is asking him questions about being king. He said, are you king? Are you king of the Jews? And here's what Jesus said. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Now, friend, why would Jesus even talk about a kingdom to Pilate knowing good and well that his kingdom was not going to be established for thousands of years, Pilate wouldn't even be around. Pilate wouldn't need to know anything about a kingdom. You know why he did? Because Jesus was king, and that implied or concluded that he must have a kingdom. And Jesus started telling him about his kingdom. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom was a spiritual kingdom. It was going to be a spiritual kingdom that was going to deal with the spiritual man. It was not a physical, fleshly, earthly kingdom. That's a problem people have. You see, the problem they have is they're looking for they're looking for something down here on earth, just like uh, 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 Christ's disciples did. But notice this: in John three, John three verse three, a lot of people are familiar with this verse. But look at this: Jesus answered and said unto him, talk about Nicodemus here. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There's the kingdom. Why are you talking about the kingdom, Jesus? Lord, why are you talking about the kingdom knowing good and well Nicodemus is not going to see the kingdom? He's not going to have any way to see the kingdom because here we are 2,000 years from your teaching and we still haven't seen it. Well, apparently Jesus understood the kingdom was going to be close by and Nicodemus needed to know something about it. And he said, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter to the kingdom of God. Now, friends, think with me. Let's reason together. You have to enter the kingdom <clears throat> spiritually 
by being born spiritually. Now, if you have to enter the kingdom by being born spiritually, why? Why would you have to be born spiritually if you're entering into a physical kingdom? Now just think about that. Why would you have to be born spiritually if the kingdom that you're entering into is a physical, earthly kingdom that Christ is going to set up and reign on this, on this earth? Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. That's right. If you believe the kingdom has not uh, uh, been established and that when it is established, it's going to be an earthly kingdom and not a spiritual kingdom, that's a problematic verse too. See? That's a problematic verse. Jesus is talking about the kingdom and says you've got to be born spiritually. Why? Here's why. Because friends, brethren, and uh, neighbors, the kingdom deals with the hearts of men. It deals with the heart of man. It is a spiritual kingdom made up of, of, of spiritual beings. Notice this. In Mark 12, verse 28, I'm going to put this up here so we can read the whole context. Mark 12, verse 28. <clears throat> One of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, The Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. The second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, for there is, no, there is none other commandment greater than these. The scribe, the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as thyself is more than all the whole of burnt offerings and sacrifices. In other words, the spiritual, the spiritual part of the commands are more important than the physical commands like burnt offerings and sacrifices. And Jesus said, when he saw that he entered discreetly, said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Now, why would, why would he say you're not far from the kingdom of God? Wait a minute. I thought the kingdom of God hadn't been, was not going to be established or ha for another at least 2,000 years. We're still waiting on it. Why would you say you're not far from the kingdom of God if, if the kingdom was not going to be established <clears throat> until years later? You're not far from the kingdom of God, but the kingdom of God is far from you? Boy, that's confusing. It must be because the kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. And you can enter into this spiritual kingdom through a spiritual birth. It's not a physical kingdom. It's not a physical kingdom. But when you have people who are looking for an earthly kingdom and, you're, and they're looking for a physical inheritance by being a certain race of people like Mr. James, and you're, they're looking for a physical inheritance because they think that God has promised them something physical as a physical people like Israel over there and all we're spent sending all our money over there because we think or so many people think that Israel is God's chosen people and they're going to get a promised land and that's why in 1948 they were given that land because oh that's their homeland that's their birthright friends that, that promise will feel a long time ago the physical promises for Israel have been fulfilled. And Mr. James's problem, and so many other people is, they're still looking for the kingdom way off, and they're looking for an earthly kingdom way off, and then you show them verses like this, where Jesus says to a man, you're not far from the kingdom. Well, here's what we're going to have. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Yeah, it's a problematic verse. It's a problematic verse, friends, because you're looking at a kingdom that God never intended for you. You're looking at a kingdom in a way God never intended for you to look at. It's not a physical kingdom. It's not a physical kingdom. And so the problem that they're having, number one, is the kingdom was near and they think it was far. 
They're looking for a kingdom that was earthly. In reality, it was spiritual. And now, let me tell you another problem. Let me tell you another problem with the kingdom. The problem that they have with the kingdom is that it's already here. It's already here. Friends, now listen. Let's, let's, think, let's reason with me here. In 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 12, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12, Paul says that ye, that ye would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Now, Paul is talking, Paul is talking about uh, uh, the kingdom as if it is already here. Isn't it? Isn't he talking about that? He sure is. He's saying, look, the kingdom, the kingdom is already here. You're walking in it. God called you into the kingdom. You need to walk worthy because the kingdom's already here. Hebrews 12, 28, wherefore we receiving a kingdom. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How are, how are they receiving a kingdom if the kingdom hasn't come yet? we got the people still playing, praying all over the, all over the world. Oh, our Father art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And here the Bible clearly says we're receiving a kingdom. I don't know what kind of kingdom you're looking for, but if, you understand, if you're still looking for a physical kingdom, I know what you're going to have. You're going to have some problems. These are going to be some, uh, some problematic verses for you. They're going to give you trouble. See? Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. That's right, because they talk about the kingdom as already being here, and you're looking for a way off, see? It's already in existence. Here, let's look again. Let's look at another one. <clears throat> Acts 8 and verse 12. When they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Why would they believe anything about the kingdom of God? Why was Philip even preaching things about the kingdom? Why would he be telling them anything about the kingdom and then they're going to turn around and say, well, when's it going to be here? Well, we don't really know. It's so many years off in the future. You need to get ready for it, but chances are you're going to die. And 2,000 years later, we're still waiting on it. Why waste my time talking about it? Why not talk about something that's more important? Philip knew the, the kingdom was already here because he was preaching about the kingdom. He's preaching about the kingdom. See? Acts 14, verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Sounds to me like the kingdom of God is connected with some tribulation. Now, Mr. James says that the kingdom is not here because uh, <clears throat> there's too much trouble going on, too much trouble in the world. Let's see. Uh, here he is. Uh, there's nothing here that says we have already been saved. It's, it, he says he's he translated has, us into he has the kingdom. He delivered us from the powers of darkness. And translated us into the kingdom. Translated us into the <coughs> kingdom. Is the kingdom here or not? Oh, is there, oh, well, he has... We are not. Uh, do you really think that we are living in the kingdom now with all the evil going on in the world today? All right. Now, you really think we're living in the kingdom with all the, all the evil going on in the world today? Well, I said yes to that question, and I need to clarify that. He's not in the kingdom. He could be in the kingdom if he'd obey the gospel, but the kingdom is in existence. If you are in the church of Christ, you are in the kingdom of God. Everybody's not in the kingdom, but they could be because the kingdom is clearly in existence simply by uh, going by what the Bible says. Now, this may be a problematic verse for him. Hey, problematic verse talking about the kingdom in the present tense. The Bible talks about the kingdom in the present tense. It's going to give him some trouble for sure. It's going to give him some trouble because it was already in existence. Paul said in Colossians 3.13, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians 1.13. Now, I was asking Mr. James about this. This was the one I was trying to get him to talk about. And it was giving him trouble. Why? It's a problematic verse. 
See? Problematic so kingdom's not already here? Yeah. Yeah, the kingdom is coming right down here to earth. I'm talking about it's not already here? Oh, the kingdom is definitely not yet here. Okay. It doesn't so, come until the second coming. Kingdom is definitely not here. Well, maybe we should let Paul re retract this. Maybe make a correction, which I'm pretty sure that if Mr. James has his way when he's writing his little Bible, you know, he might he might make Paul change his words there. Oh, Paul, you got it wrong, you know. These conspiracy theorists, Jewish uh, translators and Catholic translators, they made it talk about the kingdom present tense. Friends, when someone is having trouble with the Bible, it's usually because their doctrine is wrong, not because the Bible's wrong. See? And these are problematic verses because these people are looking for a kingdom that's never going to come. The kind of kingdom they're looking for is not going to come. All right, let's go and put our phone numbers up. Scotty? Now, these are problematic verses. Problematic verses because they don't understand what the Bible says. The Bible says the kingdom was near. They look for it far. The Bible says the kingdom was spiritual. They want to be earthly. The Bible says the kingdom was already in existence in the first century when the Bible had been written. They're still looking for it to come. All right? You're on the word of the Lord. Hey, James Steve from Michigan. Good program, brother. Hey, Steve. Good to hear you. Hey, uh, yeah, good, good, good to see you on the program. Doing a good job, and uh, man, that's a great point you're making there. When uh, Matthew chapter six, Jesus went and preaching that the kingdom is at hand, and how we just don't start uh, advertising things that are so far off that they don't apply to us. Exactly. And I was wondering, I was wondering if you'd, uh, and I know you probably have, but God operates the exact same way. And Daniel chapter eight, verse twenty-six. He told Daniel to hold back the vision because it That's was not yet point. for many days. That's a good point. There's a yeah, there's a there's a biblical example of God holding back uh, information if it's so far off that don't apply to him. That's right. All right, look, I, I've got it up here. The vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Therefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. And that's exactly right. Yeah, there's gotcha. the things that God wants that are pertinent. He, he lets them be known. But why give it to somebody Amen. that doesn't have any use for it? Amen, exactly. If it's so far off that we can't have it, we can't see it, we we're never going to experience it, well, then it doesn't apply to us, and God's going to keep it back until the proper time. And I think that uh, I think it fits real good, and you're doing a good job, brother. All right, I appreciate it. Appreciate the call. Okay, buddy. Have a good All right, night. you too. All right, excellent point. Listen, friends, God is, is uh, uh, ultra- and, and hyper-efficient. I mean, he is so efficient. He doesn't tell you information that you don't know. Even Jesus said to the disciples, there are some things that you can't bear right now. I'm not going to tell you some things. See? So why start talking about the kingdom and all these people certainly didn't understand it and they never would see it and they would experience it? Good point. So the kingdom was in existence. When Paul came along, yeah, the kingdom was in existence. Mr. James was saying, oh, no, no, it's not going to come until it comes a second time. Well, friends, now we, now we get back to, the, to some of these verses that he was having trouble with to start with. In, uh, J in Revelation 1, verse 9, here's another one. Here's another one. John said, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom. John says, I'm in the kingdom. He's writing his letter. He says, I'm in the kingdom. John, foolish John, don't you know better? Don't you know the kingdom is not going to come until Christ comes the second time? Let me tell you something, friends. I'll take the apostle John over Eli James and anybody else any day of the week. John says he was in the kingdom. I'm going to take John. Now, what would you, what would you say to that, Mr. James? What would you say to that when John says he's in the kingdom and you said the kingdom's not going to be established until he comes a second time? I know what you'd say. No, I know what he'd say. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. He'd say it's a problematic verse. That's exactly right. And then he'd start saying, well, I'm sure if you let me dig around it long enough and look at the translation, I can find out why it's wrong. Now, friends, come on. Are you going to take the Bible or are you going to take the Bible? See, we're showing you clearly the kingdom has already been established. 
It was in the mind of God from the beginning of time, and it was in the form of the church, and that's what Christ established. Now, the problem that you may be having, the reason why you may have some problem verses is because you think the kingdom has yet to, uh, yet to be established, but in reality, the Bible says it already has. Now, here it is. In Mark 9, verse 1, now we're going to get back to the very one that, that we started on with Mr. James, and we're going to see what Jesus said. He, ca he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Now, did you hear what Mr. James said? Mr. James says, well, there, either there's some here. Maybe should I just let you play it? He said, there's, uh, there's some, either there's some here who have not tasted death or the kingdom has already come, but the kingdom has not come. Well, friends, I'm not. You know, I, I may be born at night and kind of slow sometimes, but I, I know a whole lot. I know better than that. I know better than that. I know that. Uh, okay, in Mark 9 1, then. The conclusion sir. is. In Mark 9 the 1, is Jesus said, Verily I say unto you that there be some that stand here which shall not taste death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Is there still some 2,000 year old people watching for the kingdom? Mark 9? Well, Mark. it's just some. It says not all. Okay. So, so there's some 2,000-year-old people? Will not taste. Okay. Uh, what's the, uh, Mark, what's the verse again? Verse 1. 9, verse 1. Okay. Verily I say to you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Okay, well, how many? Well, how about one? Yeah. Produce one. You think there's one There's one person that's still alive from when Jesus said this that has not died and still waiting for the kingdom? Well, this, this is a problematic verse. What's your interpretation? It's not a problem you, for me. Do you think that this, this verse literally says that some people uh, have not tasted of death for the last 2,000 years? No, you're saying that. You're saying the kingdom has not come, has not come yet, and Jesus said... Some that stand here will not taste death until they see the kingdom come. Now, if you okay. say the kingdom has not come, you've got somebody out here that's over 2,000 years old still alive. Oh I, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I, I get you now. I get you now. Okay. Verily I say that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of, uh, of God come with power. Well, the, the kingdom... Is the kingdom is described as having no sin. This is not the kingdom, sir. Some of those people have... Now, now, now let, let's reason together here. Either some standing there had not died and, and the kingdom had not come, or there's some still living today 2,000 years old. And he said, let me tell you, the kingdom hadn't come yet. Well, there's somebody out there, somebody out there that... that need to find that 2,000 year old person because I can assure you that, that the Guinness Book of World Record doesn't know about it. You know, we need to know their name. And uh, I meant to look up to find out who the, uh, the Guinness record holder, uh, who the oldest person was, but I'm, sh I'm pretty sure they're not much older than 115 or something. Maybe 120, but I guarantee you they ain't nowhere close to 2,000. Now, friends, let's get real. This is a problem verse. It's a problematic verse. The problem that we have with this verse is it's problematic. Yeah, it's problematic. It, it, uh, it chews up his doctrine and spits it out. I've not tasted of death, but th so, that doesn't mean we're in the kingdom. So That doesn't mean we're in the kingdom. Just because somebody out there 2,000 years old, not a lot. Let me tell you, if there's somebody out there 2,000 years old, I, I would take that as proof that the kingdom hadn't come. You know what, friends? <laughs> the kingdom has already come. So there's got to be somebody out there that's still alive that heard Jesus say this. Or that was alive when Jesus said that. I'm not saying that either. Uh, well, you've got to say I'm one way or the other. You've got to say one way or the other. You've got to say one way or the other. One is a problematic verse. Uh, uh, it's, a either, problem, either, it's a problem for your doctrine. Somebody that's is still sure. alive from 2,000 years ago. 122 and a half years old is the, is the Guinness... Uh, record holder for the oldest living person. That's not, that's not even a, 
hairs close to 2,000 years old. See? All right? You on the word from the Lord? Afternoon to you, James. Hey, how are you doing? I'm hanging in there. All right. Uh, James, uh, you're doing some great points. Uh, didn't Jesus also say to the apostles that he would eat with them again to the kingdom come with power? Well, he said, I won't eat with you until it be fulfilled in the kingdom. We, we showed that verse earlier. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Mark, Mark 9, 1, uh, the verse we just looked at is where he said the kingdom would come with power. Now, after he was resurrected and he was with the apostles, I, I believe you pointed out 40 days. 40 days. Well, didn't he eat with them then? Well, he was... I'm sure he did, but the kingdom hadn't come yet. Right, right. The kingdom didn't come till Acts 2. Right. And then he, he ate with them in the kingdom when he communed with them. I see. All right, I thought that... Uh, I was just trying to point out that uh, he did eat with them even after he was resurrected uh, from the dead. Right. And he was with the apostles for 40 days. Okay. Yeah. And... Ex expressly teaching them about the kingdom. Exactly. Acts 1, Acts 1, verse 2 and 3. All right, thank you so much. All right, thanks for your call. All right. Uh, uh, so so here, we, here we are, friends. You know, it's, uh, it's very clear that the problem, the problem verses that people have have to deal with the, pro the verses that, that twist up their doctrine, twist up their doctrine, all right? Let's look at some more problem verses here. Here we go. Uh, well, let me get my thing off the screen here. <clears throat> In 2 Samuel 7, verse 12, Samuel makes this prophecy, or God makes this prophecy to David. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy father, I will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom, and, it shall, and he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish uh, the throne of his kingdom forever. Now this was a statement, a prophecy that was made to David about one of his children, one of his seed. And it was going to take place, notice, when David would sleep with his fathers. That's when he's dead. When David died, God was, or when David was dead, God was going to establish the kingdom of his son. Now, the Herald Camping Camp that, is, that on May 21st is looking for a cross to come back uh, in the rapture and establish the kingdom, uh, notice this. This is going to give them some problems. This is going to be uh, uh, one of these problem verses because of, the, of, of their doctrine, okay? Notice this. In Acts 2.29, here's what Peter says. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. He is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us to this day. When Peter and the other eleven were preaching on the day of Pentecost, they said David was dead and buried. He was in the ground. He was sleeping with his father. And it was on this occasion that Christ established his kingdom on the day of Pentecost. It was the church. The church and the kingdom are one and the same. Acts, excuse me, Matthew 16, verse 18. I'm trying to hurry here. Matthew 16, 18. Jesus said, Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And then he tells uh, uh, Peter, And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom. The church and the kingdom are one and the same, okay? Now, Peter says that when this was established, on the days that this was established, that David was dead and buried, just like God prophesied. Now, friends, think with me. If the rapture takes place and then the kingdom is established, if the rapture takes place and then the kingdom is established, look what you have. When the rapture takes place, David, righteous David, is going to be resurrected. He's going to be caught up. He's no longer going to be dead and buried. If the kingdom is established after the resurrection of the righteous, according to the premillennialism, 
if he, if it's established after righteous, then it's too late. Because David would be no longer be dead and buried. You see how problematic this is? You see the you see the trouble that people have when they try to when they try to um, put their doctrine or fit their doctrine into uh, the Bible. They always come up with some problematic verses. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Well, this, this is a problematic verse. Now, friends, the kingdom that God established was the church. And in Acts 2, verse 47, the kingdom was preached and they were added to the church. The church was established and God added the saved to the kingdom because they had been born spiritually into that kingdom. You can be a part of the kingdom too. You can be a part of the kingdom too. You can believe the gospel, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, repent of your sins, confess Christ before man, and be baptized for the remission of sins. God will add you to the church, the kingdom of his dear Son, and then you can be a citizen in that great kingdom. It's not, it's not still a long ways off. It's right here and right now. Friends, we're running out of time, so I'm going to wrap up. I want to say a thank you to uh, all the folks up in Michigan, all the folks who are watching online. We've been getting some uh, some call or not some calls, but some uh, Facebook notes from those who are watching online. Appreciate those comments. Until next time, friend, I want you to remind you to stay, first of all, stay tuned for uh, uh, Religious Review coming up after the program. I'm trying to get my uh, thing back up here. Religious Review coming up at 1030 after the news. And uh, uh, remember, if you are in the area and you want to worship with us, we're at, we're at 2 feet of the Boulevard, 823 Starling Avenue in uh, Martinsville, 120 American Legion in Danville. Until next time, friends, remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You'll always get a word from the Lord, and then you can do your own religious review.